Atmosphere is one of the world's tallest and most unique drop towers. Located at Lisaberry, this is a massive, and I mean massive, drop tower. The ride itself stands 381 feet or 116 meters tall, but it also is located atop a 9 story tall hill. That absurd height alone makes it notable, but it was also previously converted from an observation tower. So in this review, I will explain if all of this makes it one of the best drop towers out there. In 1990, the park built Lisa Berry Stornet, aka Lisa Berry Tower. This was an observation tower offering views from roughly 48 stories above the ground between the ride's height and location atop the hill. While I never rode this, I can tell the views would have been amazing since they are an atmosphere. In 2003, Hyda Park and Intamin converted their Ausius Term 2 observation tower into Scream, a gyro drop tower. Lisa Berry noticed and gave their observation tower a similar treatment a few years later. This was also done by Intamin. In 2011, Atmosphere opened as Europe's tallest drop tower. This record has since been broken by Highlander at Hansa Park, but Atmosphere is still one of the 10 tallest drop towers worldwide. And Lisa Berry didn't forget about those who want a milder experience. In 2012, they built Lisa Berry Shoelit, aka Lisa Berry Wheel, atop the very same hill. This was a nearly 200 foot or 60 meter tall observation wheel offering similarly great views to Lisa Berry Tower. Atmosphere is accessed from this indoor plaza atop the hill. It's shared with Helix. To access it, you can either walk up the entirety of the hill, or the park conveniently offers two escalators to take you directly up to the ride. This drop tower has an ominous industrial theme to it. The queue line and ride area have dark lighting that helps build up the fear. This ride doesn't have much queue space. I believe a full queue takes roughly a half hour, but it routinely was closer to a 10 to 20 minute wait on a weekend during my recent visit to Lisa Berry. But you can typically walk onto this attraction if you head there during the first or last hour. Towards the end of the queue, there are two lanes to choose from. One for virtual reality, and one for the standard ride experience. In 2022, the VR experience was offered while Balder was undergoing track repairs. This was meant to be a temporary attraction since it had a major impact on the ride's throughput. But it proved so popular that the park retained it, just in a limited capacity. The ride holds 36 riders per cycle in a ring-shaped vehicle. 8 seats per cycle are now reserved for virtual reality. The limited availability was a nice balance for those who wanted to experience the VR without killing the ride's overall capacity. I cannot speak to the quality of the VR though because I've only experienced atmosphere in its natural form. I personally don't see the allure putting a screen in front of your eyes when you're on a ride this tall, but if you enjoy it, to each their own. Riders are restrained by over-the-shoulder harnesses. These are similar to the ones found on several intimate accelerator coasters. You have a thick cylindrical bar across your lap and soft straps over your shoulders. These are better than the tighter harnesses on Intamin's earlier drop towers, but I prefer their more open lap bars on rides like Lex Luthor. Once checked, you begin the long climb. It takes nearly two minutes to reach the top, and that's fine by me because the views are stunning. With all of that height, you get an unparalleled view of the park in Gothenburg. Few rides offer better sight lines. Despite how the ride looks like a gyro drop tower, the gondola doesn't actually rotate, which is a bit of a bummer. If you want the best view of the park, sit on the side closest to the exit. This will have you staring down the hill at the park. It's especially sweet seeing Helix navigate its tangled layout beneath you. If you want the best view of the city, sit on the opposite side. This gives you an optimal view of the buildings. Once you reach the top, you don't stay there for too long. After a brief pause, you are released with no warning. This is a 33 story tall drop, and it lasts an eternity. You get good sustained floater airtime the whole way down. You don't quite drop like a rock like Intamin's second generation towers, but you can get a bit of a stomach drop sensation if you stare at the ground during the descent. Still, the plunge is an absolute rush between the float and sheer length, as you reach speeds of nearly 68 miles per hour or 109 kilometers per hour on the way down. You then smoothly decelerate and lower back to the bottom, ending the experience. So what would I rate Atmosphere? I would give this drop tower a 9 out of 10. This is an excellent ride. 
This offers one of the best views of any attraction between its size and placement. Then the drop is well above average too. The quantity of airtime is matched by very few drop towers. I just wish the drop had a better stomach drop sensation to it, but it does everything else well. So those are my thoughts on Atmosphere at Lisa Berry. What are your thoughts on this ride? Whether it be the regular form or the version with VR? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.